may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer requests in the bottom. It's been a long night. Very long night. Been up pretty much all through it. Looking for updates and everything else. If you don't know, by now, Israel attacked Iran. Iran did send ballistic missiles into Israel late last night. And we're still waiting to see what Iran and their... Uh, military is going to do now because they was convening last night now iran has come out and said that hey next time if israel did this what they would do was send a weapon that they didn't even nobody knows about so now we're waiting to see that but also we're waiting to see what russia is going to do literally my hair is all over the place you can tell it's been a long night a very long night uh but literally we're waiting to see what Russia is going to do. They said if Israel goes in and they attack Iran on Iran soil, that they would be in on the counter strike against Israel. So we're waiting to see a lot of things, a lot of maybes. Everybody just talk. But one thing we do know, God warned us about it. So we knew that after the 18th, everything would escalate. Thank God for that. God let us know that. So we at least we was aware that it was coming. I advise any of you to buy gas today. They're saying gas is already up 6%, probably on the West Coast. God only knows what they'll have to deal with there. So, and look for everything. That we're already dealing with inflation like crazy. Hopefully, we're out of here today. We don't have to worry about any of this junk. But Russia's all over the news. Now, last night, they hit some targets in Ukraine, and they killed a lot of people last night. Russia's getting bolder and bolder. And they're trying to make sure that their authority has been seen around the world. So they're getting more dangerous, like I told you. Eventually, when we're gone, the Russia and America will go at it. It ain't now, but it's coming. Russia asked the United States to consider sanctioning Israel. They're going completely after Israel. Just like Gog and Magog said. So this, we're seeing that start to really come alive. Russia's parliament represented the UN, uh, Vazel Nebenze has called on the United Nations to consider imposing sanctions on Israel over its non-compliance with the uh, obligatory resolutions passed by the Security Council, which, like I said, the UN can't do anything. So, he noted that the UNSC Resolution 2728 demanded a ceasefire in Gaza during the Ramadan, and it had not been implemented by Israel, and they're not going to. They already told you that. We remind you once again that the non-compliance with mandatory Security Council resolutions must lead to sanctions against the violators. We believe that the Council should consider the issue without delay. Now, Benza said on Thursday during a UN Council meeting. So you're seeing the UN, which is all governments, going against Israel. Sound familiar? And what happened last night? We're not going to be here much longer. French Foreign Minister uh, Stephanie Sojourn also called for sanctions on Israel. That's from France. In February, Paris sanctioned 28 Israel nationals through the French government has not been published their names. The Hamas ceasefire resolution was adopted by the Security Council on March 25th and a vote of 14 in favor and none against. With the U.S. abstaining, the document demanded the ceasefire in Gaza during Ramadan, the immediate an unconditional release of all hostages and all humanitarian access of Gaza to be ensured. But Palestine never did that, and Hamas never brought in the... So they still want to go after Israel, but Hamas still gets off scot-free. You see what we're going with this. Early this month, Israel ad ad admitted that the IDF had mistakenly conducted a strike on the World Central Kitchen Group, which killed seven of... And these 
these governments that are complaining about this have killed, massacred millions. So I don't know where they have the right to say anything. Three British nationals are Australian and Palestinian, are Pole and U.S. Canadian. Shortly after the U.S. abstained on the U.S. Gaza ceasefire resolution, Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu canceled a planned visit to Washington by a high-level delegation in protest over the move. He accused the White House of retreating from what he said he had principled position by allowing the vote to pass without attaching conditions providing for the release of hostages held by Hamas. Now, I understand. God did not put that X over America on the 8th for no reason. America's getting ready to do something really stupid. Very stupid. And that's coming. But we're getting ready to leave here, thank God. Hamas raided nearby Israeli military bases and villages on October 7th, killing uh, 1,100 Israelis and taking over 200 hostages. A weekend truce deal reached in late November saw 145 hostages freed in exchange for 240 Palestinian prisoners. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Shakiri Mohammed bin whatever said negotiation stalled between Israel and Hamas to secure a truce in Gaza and the release of more hostages. Now the word is coming out tonight that part of this thing, which you can't you can't believe our press either, they just lie about everything. Our press is gone. Could you just the covers last night was all done by YouTube and by civilians. Our main media nowhere to be found and most of the stuff that came out was absolutely lies and they just made stuff up that just shows you how close we are to the end but what I was going to bring up I got too ahead of myself once again I'm, I'm bad for that I'm old but we're so close to the rapture now and we talked about a spring offensive we're starting to see that happen now with Russia and the Ukraine and they're taking out a lot of Ukraine already they still are massing there on the Belarus border, looking over the top of the Sawaski Gap. We still see a major force of Russian and Belarusian troops manifesting there, piling up, getting ready to try to take that gap, which is also going to bring NATO into us. But what you're seeing right now around the world with Russia, France, United States, everybody, they're coming against Israel. This is exactly what the Bible told us would happen. I've seen a lot of news articles today of people saying, well, you know, not everything's Israeli prophecy. Everything goes through Israel. Anybody tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. They are our number one timepiece of anything that's going on right now. It's Israel. With what's happening with them being surrounded by what's happening to them with Iran, and we're still waiting to see what Iran's going to do, what Russia's going to do. This is out of, the Pandora's box basically has already been opened. What happened last night, we told you it was coming, but now it's nonstop. This is going to be tit for tat, tit for tat, until the world explodes. So we was right. We are completely at the verge of the rapture. We're definitely close, and we knew we was. We just, we was just waiting to see what was going to fire off, and now we see. Russia bombs F-16 host bases. Now, remember, we talked about these F-16s going into Ukraine. Well, Russia took them out, these bases. Three airfields hit, three MiG-29s and two S-300 arrays destroyed. As I said, it's been taking a, a back seat to the news, but Russia's been annihilating Ukraine in the last couple of days. The Russian Air Force Base uh, bombed the airports of Ukraine where the F-16s are about to land. Uh, the s Torek Air Force Base had two S-300s, two S-300 gunners and three Ukraine MiG-29s. One warehouse where one 5P-85S TLE radars were destroyed. The whole operation of the U Russia Air Force uh, and artillery was coordinated by a, a drone about 100 kilometers from the contact line. According to local residents, there has been explosions there since early morning. The first series of explosions in the city occurred this morning. A few hours later, the second wave of attacks began. In addition, many explosions were heard around the airport. It's reported that a result of Russian strikes against the Pormosk, a temporary point of deployment for foreign mercenaries, that's probably where the French soldiers was killed. The reserve airfield in that region was hit also. 
in the morning airstrikes carried out in military energy facilities in the region. According to the sources, the airport of the city of Columbia in Ivano regions was hit. I'll probably say it and butcher all these names. In a reserve airport used by the Ukraine Armed Forces Air Force in the recent event of a Russian attack over the Markanova, Darlinsanova, Kantanova airfields, Kiev moves aircraft to Kamala airfield. In uh, Avano, explosions occurred near that city also. And information indicates that this points to temporary deployments of Ukraine armed forces were hit after the explosions nearby neighborhoods were cordoned off and several ambulances rushed to the scene. It says, in addition to an ammunition depot, was also hit in the same area. At the same time, once again, the airfield and all these regions was hit. Ukraine pilots trained at the airfield, which was also hit on the night of April 16th. It is understood that the Russian armed forces have increased their number of attacks against Ukraine airports. What I'm thinking is going to happen. The reason we're seeing this, they're taking out their air force and all the places they could store an air force. They're getting ready to do this great big invasion that I told you was coming that will encompass, encompass pretty much all of Ukraine on the west side of bumping up against Russia. That's what God showed us years ago, and it's starting to manifest itself. The go is obvious. First ability, uh, first ability of Ukraine Air Forces to strike Russia targets are minimized. Second, it sends a clear message to Kiev allies about the delivery of F-16s. Finally, aircraft repair and drone assembly facilities are destroyed. The control center of the operational command of the north was destroyed. The Russian Armed Forces launched a missile attack during and under the control center of operational command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine's north was destroyed. See, what they're getting ready to do, they're clearing their way to come in. And when they do, NATO will have no choice but other than use nukes to stop them. Satan has convinced NATO if Russia comes in, they're going to come after the Baltics and everybody. And it's very possible they will. But Satan is in all these people's heads. He's setting up his battlefield for the Antichrist. Because he knows what we know, like I've said over and over. He knows we're leaving. He definitely knows now what's happening with Israel and Iran. He knows. He definitely knows. We're at the end. So from this point on, Satan is going to really start ramping this up. More portals, more Nephilim, Nephilim showing up. Weirder stories, worse news, volcanoes, earthquakes, you're going to see it all. And if I'm right about the heifers, and they was also on this on the 18th, the day that this happened, and it really makes sense that they sacrificed those heifers before they went into Iran. I'm telling you, mark it down. I believe that's what happened. Because God gave me two of those events. Something would happen on the 18th, and also the heifers. Okay? Because that's... He gave me the hint about the cowboys. And I was like, okay, what does this mean? And then Lisa Boyce told me, she said, Chris, that's the heifers. Because it was three heifers. And in the dream, I got the three, three day warning. It was the three day, it was the three heifers. I thought it was three days leading to the 18th, but it was the three. It was the heifers and the cowboy was the hint. That's why God left that for me. So I would know that that is when they got sacrificed. That makes sense. They get sacrificed, then they go to war with Iran. That's why this, I'm telling you, that's what happened. I mark it down. They went to war after they sacrificed the heifers. They made sure that got done first. That's why God was showing us that. Now, they're going to say it happened this week. They knew they couldn't do it this week, so they've already filmed it. They'll say it's going to happen on Passover, but it won't. It's already been done. To protect it. That's why God made sure we knew that that is right. They did that before they went to war with Iran because basically that's where they went. Now, the United States is now saying, well, we let Israel do that if, and we let them go into Rafa if they just do limited strikes on Iran. But we're finding out they did a lot more than limited strikes. So right now, you don't know what to believe. It's coming in from all other places, but thank God, God's warning us. The heifers were sacrificed. The war started. The next date up, like I said, we don't have to see it. We could be gone as the 26th. I don't know what that is. But I know that they reconvene on the Palestinian vote on that day also. So all these events are coming. 
Doesn't mean we have to be there to see them. This could be any time we're leaving. That's why I said, hold on tight, people. Grab Jesus by the leg because we're getting ready to leave. Because right now, from this time on, the rapture can happen any moment, literally, from this moment on. Do not take your eyes off the sky now. Do not. Listen for that shofar because it's coming. Russia's gearing up to come after Israel too. They're already trying to put sanctions against them. The world is coming against Israel. America is really the only thing left, and it's about to do the same thing. It does not like Israel also. Our government is not fans of Israel. So, so basically, Israel's on their own, and God knows that. That's called Jacob's trouble. That's why I'm telling you we're about to leave. Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died, was buried, rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Trust the blood of Jesus. Call upon Jesus now before it's too late, because you're running out of time, people. There's no in-between. There's no waiting room. It's heaven or hell. you got to make a choice. The devil's going to get his butt kicked here. A little bit over seven years. Right at seven years. That's when Armageddon's happening. That's why this is all being set up for the Antichrist. Because once we leave, he's got to have his guy to have control over all resources and everything that he needs. Where Everybody will have to go through him. And that's what he's going to set up. World War III gives him that easily. America's gone. Uh, certainly after the rapture, in World War III, America is non non-existent. It's gone. And from what the Bible code says, that you know, Brother Martin was looking in, basically says it'll be made desolate. So there will be no life here if you think you're going to make it to the tribulation of America. Bible code says no. It will be made desolate. And a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not real. It's not real. Let me tell you something. It's in the Bible code. And everything that comes in that thing comes to I'm telling you, everything doesn't lie. And it makes sense because in the Bible, America's gone in Revelation. Non-existent. Now we know why, because it's made desolate. That is what's coming. That's why I tell you, get out while you can. Because when we leave, America's just going downhill into hell, basically, once we leave. It's going to go downhill quick. going to be almost nothing left of it. Pretty much there ain't. From what the Bible code tells us, it's made desolate. So... That's why everything shifts to the east because over here, there's no there's no place to live anymore. It's just gone. But like I said, seven years of hell, people on earth. What do you think? It was going to be sunshines and daisy and you'd still be shopping at Walmart and getting stuff at Wendy's? We've told you over and over. Almost everything here between that and tsunamis and earthquakes will eliminate anything left and America will not be standing, basically. It will be destroyed. There won't be much left, if there's anything left. I saw a remnant after just the first strikes of World War III, and even then America looked like a third world country. And it don't get no better after that. America tried to enslave Israel. The government did, not the people. They tried to control Israel, and they tried to make, and they actually will be one of the last votes to make the two-state solution. America will do that. It will be our government that you're seeing now will be the death now that will separate Israel into a two-state solution. That's why the X was formed over us on the 8th. It will be America will have the deciding vote and they will vote against Israel and America will be destroyed because of it. That's what's coming. Mark it down. We're at the end, people. Very soon, we will be out of here. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day, Father. We see everything that's coming and going right now. We see that the war in the Middle East is imminent, and we see everything that's happening. And we ask of you, Lord, to watch over the Jews in these dark times as Jacob's trouble is starting to roll out before our very eyes, in Jesus' name. Ask of you, Lord, to watch over the watchmen and watch women as time is getting very close to the end for us here. And we're being attacked from every which end. We ask you, Lord, to protect us and our families in these last days. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Ask you, Lord, to watch over all the innocent, the sick, the hungry, the ones who need, Lord, that are desperate right now. Lord, I ask you to be with them and get them to the rapture, Lord. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord Jesus, I ask of you, Lord, to just thank you for just literally waking us up in these last moments. 
and thank you for everything that you've done by getting us to the point we need to be by using different watchmen and watch women to just get us to this point. And we thank you, God, for that in Jesus' name. I ask of you, Lord, to just be with us at this point. We know we're close, but give us the strength to make it to the finish line because we know that we're almost there. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done. You've been there. You've given us the dates before they happened so we would know that you're still on the throne and you're still working and we are safe. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. And also, Lord, I want to say, Lord, uh, I ask of you to watch over the ones that come against the program and the ones that come against us. I ask of you, Lord, to please lighten their hearts before it's too late in Jesus' name. I ask of you also, Lord, to watch over the ones, you know, each and every one of these families. Their names are here each and every day, them and their family members and their friends that they need to have saved, that they will be saved before this is too late. Before we get out of here, these names and these comments will be saved. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. God bless each and every one of you. And thank you for, like I said, once again, for all your support for the channel, those who bought me coffees today, those who bought the super stickers. I want to thank each and every one of you for just being here and helping with the program since the inception of it. Without your all's dreams, visions, and help by spreading the word that rapture is on its way and to get on that boat, this would have never been successful. So I look forward to spending an eternity with each and every one of you. And I can't wait to see you. And we're very close. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.